Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. So today we're going to discuss um, enabling Azure BDC custom domains. So the main question is why would you want to do that in the first place? Well, in a typical scenario, if you use just um, a typical Azure B2C tenant, uh, when you attempt to log in, the endpoint you're logging to is going to be a generic B2C login.com uh, sort of domain. And so if you log in using that, I mean, it's going to log you in just fine. The problem is like some customers don't really trust sort of generic domain name. In most cases, you want this domain name to be on your own uh, domain, like an, your own custom domain. That way customers can trust that they're actually logging into the right thing. So it's fairly cosmetic. It shouldn't change anything from a behavioral perspective, except if you're getting into uh, embedded signing scenarios, which we can maybe discuss in later videos. Uh, but for now, um, I just want to show you that this domain that I have is already configured for custom domains. So I can just use, you know, login my domain name. And the behavior is going to be exactly the same. It's going to log me in all the same. And today we're going to see how we're going to configure this. So I'm going to share the tutorial or the doc article as well in the video description. You, you can find it there, but let's just go through the steps together. So the first thing we're going to do is, you know, create a brand new Azure BDC tenant, just for you to understand exactly all the steps required to do that uh, from start to end. So I'm just going to type here BDC, create, and we're going to create a new BTC tenant. So the first thing we do is just set up the organization name. That's good. And the initial domain name. This is not the custom domain yet. This is the on Microsoft.com domain that we're going to create. Um, so again, it could be something as generic as this. And you want it fairly representative of your organization as well, but it doesn't really matter that much. And I'm going to choose this subscription and let's create a new resource group. So. Good, and let's create that. So it's going to take a couple of minutes. When it's done, we're going to come back to the video. So the tenant creation was successful. Now we can just navigate to the tenant. This will require us to re-authenticate um, to the new tenant. By default, it adds the account that I used to create this tenant uh, as a guest account that gives it also global administrator permissions to it. Um, so nothing else I need to do here except, you know, start working on, you know, enabling the BTC tenant for login in the first place. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is just create an app registration. And this is required so I can simulate a login later on. So um, the app I'm going to do is just jwt.ms. Um, it's it's a, just a public web app um, that we can use to display the token that we got from the user. Make sure you set the redirect URI as um, JW, HTTPS, JWT.ms as well, because we're going to redirect to that uh, token endpoint after our login has been completed. Good. Now that's done. We're going to click on redirect URIs right here. Um, and I want to make sure I enable access tokens uh, for implicit flows and also ID tokens for OpenID Connect. And I'm going to save that. So now OpenID Connect is enabled and access tokens are also enabled. Right now, this is all I need to do from a, an app perspective. Now we go back to the Azure B2C and the next order of business is to go create a user flow. So the user flow is just going to be a sign up, sign in user flow, and you can call it whatever. It's going to prefix the user flow with the B2C underscore one underscore. That's just the typical behavior. And here we get to choose what kind of claims we need to send back. Uh, I usually you know, like to have the country of the user, display name, um, the email address we collect from the user on sign up. And then after they sign in, we send the claim uh, to the, uh, you know, the application and the given name, the identity provider we use to log in, the um, access token, uh, maybe some job title information. That's fine as well and the user object ID and an indicator whether a user is a new user that has just been created. That's more than enough for what we need and we create. That's good. So now as a sanity check, let's just check that the policy works. So I can just click on the policy 
and I run user flow and uh, I have my application that I just created right here and the reply URL is uh, the jwt.ms reply URL and as you can see it's a B2C login domain and let's run the user flow so I don't have any users available yet so we're gonna sign up first and send the verification code I'm gonna get that on my email shortly and let's verify good so now I get to choose a password and let's create the user. So now that the user has been created, we've been redirected back to the JWT.ms website and uh, we have uh, everything. We have the auth token, the access token, everything is there. So that's a fairly straightforward scenario, but now we want to add a custom domain. We don't want to use this kind of, you know, uh, boilerplate B2C login.com domain because the users that are logging in might not trust that uh, domain name. Instead, we want to provide our own. Um, the first order of business is just to go and register the uh, domain. Now, there is no custom domain tab um, or blade right here in Azure B2C. However, if we switch to um, Azure Active Directory, under the same org or under the same tenant, you can find the custom domain names. Um, so this is the main domain name and then we can add a custom domain name. I, do, I just don't think the blade exists in the um, Azure B2C tenant you know, page yet, but it will, I think, in the near future. Um, for now, we can just use the Azure Active Directory page and we add a custom domain. So the custom domain can be anything we want. For me, I'm going to use accounts.mydomainname.com. So we're going to add a domain. Now it needs to verify that I'm the owner of this domain. So I need to create a text record. So I have to navigate to my DNS provider and provide those details. Now my DNS provider for this case is actually uh, Azure DNS as well. So I'm gonna show you how to do it on Azure DNS, but if you're using any other DNS provider like GoDaddy, Namecheap, Cloudflare, whatever, you just go to that DNS provider and you know add the record as I'm going to add it right now. So I just switch the tenant right here to my main tenant, which contains all the resources. Here is my domain. And I need to create a new record set that's going to be accounts. And it's a text record. And uh, the value for it, we're going to get the value right from here, is going to be ms equal this, you know, cryptic number. That's good. So we save, and now that my record has been created successfully, we can come here and verify. Good, the verification has been succeeded. So um, I don't need to do anything here anymore. Uh, I can just navigate back to Azure B2C. And now my custom domain is, is enabled. However, um, Azure B2C does not know how to receive requests on this, you know, accounts.fauzitech.com domain. It just doesn't know how to do that yet. So the next task is to create an Azure front door. And I'm just going to seek out the same resource group right here. And I'm going to add a resource that is going to be front door. Let's create a front door instance. So step one is to add front end hosts. So, um, well, the first host I can add. Uh, is just the, the default one and I'm just going to use this name we're going to come later on to allow a custom domain on there and then the backend pool so where I'm uh, sending this traffic to well um, I'll just call this b2c backend and the host name is going to be a custom host the fully qualified domain name is going to be the basic domain name of um, my b2c tenant so it's going to be login.com and everything else stays on default I can now add this and click add now that I have my backend configured now I need to create a routing rule so this is going to be named b2c rule and it's going to receive um, HTTP or HTTPS protocol, so that will do HTTPS redirection as well. For now, the front end we're looking for is the basic front door.net, you know, uh, domain. But later on, when we add a custom domain to front door as well, we can uh, fix that. 
Uh, so I'm gonna leave everything as default and just add. So that is my front door configuration, you know, initial configuration complete. We can review and create. And let's create that. So it takes a few minutes. I'm gonna come back when it's done. And now we need to um, go to the front door designer. And um, as you can see here, we're listening on the, you know, front door provided name. We don't want that. We want to listen to our own name. So we're going to go ahead and add a custom domain name. So it's asking me what the custom host is. And that's going to be accounts.mycustomdomain.com. Now it's going to go ahead and try to verify that I own that. And we're going to go back to DNS. So I'm going to open DNS in a new tab here. And this time I'm going to add a CNAME record set. Um, so I've already deleted the text record that we've done uh, previously to verify the domain on, on the Azure Active Directory page. Uh, we don't need that anymore once the verification is done. And here it's going to be accounts. And that's going to be CNAME. And that redirects back to um, the front door provided URL. So we're telling it, you know, if someone asks about accounts.thousytech.com, um, you know, resolve to the front door URL. And now that this is done, uh, I can go ahead and, you know, just make sure this is verified. So I'll just, you know, remove everything from here and then paste it again, just to force it to reevaluate. And now it's completed. So uh, the next step is to enable the custom domain HTTPS. This is required because, because all authentication has to go through um, secure transport. So we, we need to make sure that uh, TLS is enabled. Um, and it asks me whether I want a front door managed certificate or, you know, upload your own certificate using Key Vault. I'm just going to use a front door managed certificate. There's really no reason to upload my own. And we will add. So now that this is added, uh, I, I still need to go back to the B, B2C rule and switch it to use the, um, the, the, the real domain name that I wanted to use. I don't want it to forward requests from this name anymore, the front door, the default front door name, I'm just going to disregard those requests. And instead, we're going to receive requests on this endpoint instead. And now we need to save. So this is going to take a very long while. And the reason it's taking long is behind the scenes. It's, you know, validating the domain again, issuing the certificate and assigning the certificate to the endpoint. So it might take a while until that happens. And if you refresh, and click on the accounts, you will see that it submitted the request to, um, you know, issue the certificate. It will take a while, usually like 30 minutes to an hour until this workflow is done. And when it's done, uh, we'll come back and see what's happened. And the certificate has been attached. So basically we're done. So we go back to Azure BTC tenant, user, user flows, go to our user flow, and let's run this user flow to test it. B2C does not know that I've assigned a custom domain, uh, but I did. So I'm just going to paste this here. And now instead of using this domain name, I'm going to use accounts. Let's do a login. And it's done. And you can see here the issuer uh, is reflected. You know, the custom domain is reflected. The, the login experience has improved significantly from the user. They can now trust that the tokens have been issued by me and so on. And the login experience, when it happens, you will see, you know, if I run the user flow again and let's try this again, you see that it shows the proper domain name right here and so on. So now I can start using uh, this custom domain everywhere in my, in my applications and so on, and, and things will work fine. Now, a couple of caveats here. I'm using here the default UI for uh, the login experience, the sign-in experience. Uh, however, if I did choose a custom layout, uh, typically that custom layout is going to be, um, you know, saved somewhere in um, maybe Azure Blob Storage or something like that. I must make sure that the custom layout exists in a, a location where it allows cross-origin resource sharing with the new domain. Um, an example of that, if you use blob storage, for example, to host this 
this modified custom page then you would have to go to uh, the blob storage i'll just use any existing blob storage i have so i'll just click on this one for example it doesn't matter and there is cores right here and you need to allow the um, accounts dot and and the allowed methods here are get and options allowed headers is everything exposed headers is everything and then you save and then when you do that then it will be available for you to use um, the, you know the the custom page layout now will be available to to use otherwise it just won't won't work um, the other thing is that now any of your applications or any of your external parties uh, if you want to make sure to use a new domain name you have to go ahead and go and update so always instead of you know tenant name.btclogin.com you use the custom domain name so another caveat is that in some cases if you have you know your b2c tenant right here the user flow and then you test the um, existing user flow um, you see the um, if you talk to it using the B2C provided domain name, you know, the btclogin.com, it still works. It's still working fine. And uh, some sometimes you might want to disable that. And the, the way you disable that is actually to abandon user flows altogether and, uh, you know, get into something a little bit more complicated like custom policies. Um, so um, that's one thing that you have to keep in mind. Um, if you want to, you know, disable the main... Uh, the, the original domain name that was provided for you by B2C and use your own only, uh, then custom policies are required and that could be a rabbit hole, you know, uh, if you have the aptitude for that, certainly go ahead and do it. In the docs article, there is this, um, you know, section that talks about blocking access to the default domain name. And, you know, there is a sample here in GitHub that talks about exactly how to do that. Um, so that this custom policy is going to verify that the user is actually trying to access the sign in uh, you know user journey using the proper domain name so that's it for today and see you in the next one